imagine you bought a used car. And for the purposes of this example, let's say that you don't know a hell of a lot about cars going in, but you researched it a bit online and you're pretty sure you got a good deal on this make and model. So you buy your used car, you, you drive it around for a week and you hear this weird knocking in the engine. So you take it to the nearest mechanic and the mechanic tells you you got ripped off. She says this car's falling apart. Every major system is on the brink of failing and it's being held together with chewing gum and chicken wire but you're an inherently suspicious person and you just don't want to take somebody's word for it. So you decide to get a second opinion. So you take that car back to the used car dealer that you bought it from in the first place and you say, hey, can you look at this thing and make sure you didn't rip me off? And, and so he looks at it and he, and he comes back and he says with the utmost of sincerity that no, he didn't rip you off at all. So you drive away satisfied, the knocking persists, you don't trust that first mechanic anymore, so you take it to a different mechanic, and he tells you the same thing that the first one did. So you take it back to the used car dealer again, and you say, hey, man, are you entirely sure that you didn't rip me off? But he takes another look at the car and once again affirms with 100% certainty that he did not rip you off and that the car will be fine for years and years to come. And you're a little suspicious at this point, so you point to some of the chewing gum and the chicken wire that these mechanics keep showing you, but he explains that all away with a bunch of phrases that, you know, they don't entirely make sense to you. Remember, in this example, you don't know a hell of a lot about cars, but you do know that these are all legitimate car words, and if you understood more, this would all make sense. So you drive away again. Fast forward a couple of weeks, the car's broken down altogether. It doesn't run, it doesn't idle, and one of the doors fell off. So you tow it back up to the used car salesman. You tell him that you're pretty darn sure he ripped you off. But once again, he gives his utmost solemn oath that there's nothing at all wrong with the car. You're probably just flooding the engine when you try to start it or something. And when you think about it, the point of having a car was never that it was going to start anyway. So you ask maybe if he could start it, but he offers an explanation about why it wouldn't even matter if he started it. That wouldn't really convince you. That's not what you're after. You're not after him starting your car. So he sends you away again. You tow your car back home, patting yourself on the back for thwarting all those dumbass mechanics that tried to lie to you and tell you there was something wrong with your car. Isn't it amazing how obviously stupid you are in this story if we switch out religion for anything else. So this analogy occurred to me the other day as I was perusing one of the many Facebook atheist pages that I frequent. I, I saw a listener recounting his deconversion, and it was almost exactly this story. Uh, he kept being presented with the atheist arguments via books, YouTube videos, and friends, and then he kept taking all of those arguments back to his pastor back to the same guy that sold him this defective worldview in the first place. Now, to be fair to the listener in question and to the many people who have similar origin stories in atheism, the analogy breaks down in a couple of important places. So the poor victim of religious indoctrination doesn't have to kick themselves the way that our hapless second person car buyer did. If we wanted to make it accurate, we'd have to add in a whole bunch of that dealer's other customers towing around their cars that didn't run and insisting there was nothing wrong with them. We'd have to add auto magazines that argued that cars were never meant to run in the first place. We'd have to assume that you bought this car as a child and it's definitely the make and model your dad recommended. We'd have to assume that trade schools had special classes for mechanics that wanted to work on cars that didn't run and never would. But the basic issue still holds. Right. When religious people are given challenges to their religion, they invariably take them back to their pastor or their imam or their priest or their bishop or their rabbi or whatever. And they say, are you entirely sure you're not ripping me off? They'd feel like idiots immediately if they did that with any other product or service. But when it comes to religion, people don't seem to realize that they're just asking the salesman to sign off on his own work. And yes, they're paid on a commission Right. And, and that's the real place that the analogy breaks down. See, at least the used car salesman would be honest about the profit motive. Right. They'll tell you stuff like, I want to sell you a car. They'll ask, what's it going to take to get you to drive away in this car? They'll make it super clear what they're there to do. Religious leaders will fucking lie about that. You know, they're there to sell you something just like the used car salesman. Their job requires that they sell a certain number of units to keep the lights on. And yet they will never be honest enough to say, what's it going to take for me to get you into this pew? 
right? They pretend that they really just have your best interests in mind. They're really just worried about you and your immortal soul. And thus, whenever they make a sale of their non-existent product, it's dishonesty squared. And that's the group that we're dealing with. An entire profession subsidized by the government more so than any other that can only aspire to achieving the level of honesty that we'd expect from used car salesmen. And even though they could aspire to it, they don't.